Good morning, modern stutters. Yesterday we were talking and I was like, you know what I really want that we haven't had in a while? We haven't had a good chicken pot pie. So today we're gonna make a homemade chicken pot pie from scratch. Yesterday, to get ready for our chicken pot pie, which is kind of odd, planned ahead and we cooked the whole chicken, but we cooked the whole chicken with plans for a chicken pot pie. So we could make, we could have leftover chicken and then we can make a good delicious bone broth last night and use that for our gravy. So let's get started with our ingredients. We're gonna get a few things ready before we go to work. Then when we come home, we can get it ready, get it in the oven to bake. Let's get going. Okay, so first, I want a nice bowl to set everything in. Let's organize while we're We got our scrap bucket, we put all of our cutoffs and peelings in there for the pigs. I'm going to use two stalks of celery, four carrots, that's a big carrot, maybe I'll just go with three carrots, we'll go with three carrots because they're big. And we're going to use Four potatoes. Put this in our, we'll put the celery ends in the bucket. That'll go for the pigs. And that'll be fun. We have to take that out and feed the pigs. Get it all chopped up. Put it on the side in our bowl. Same thing with the carrots. Now we're getting these prepared ahead of time and ready. You could do this in the morning, or you could do it the night before. This is a neat little trick we learned years ago. And we use it all the time when we want to make a stew or a soup. And we know we're not going to have time, but we still want to eat good. We all work and we're all very busy people. That doesn't give us an excuse not to cook delicious food. We have so many gadgets and gadgets to make our life easier nowadays with cooking. It's not even funny. The carrots are probably the longest thing that are gonna take to cook. So when we're cutting them up, let's cut them small and that way we know they'll cook on the quicker side. If we leave them too big We'll have El Dente Carrots. And I don't like El Dente Carrots. I'm gonna chop the potatoes up. I'm going to keep them on the smaller side too, that way they will cook faster. This next step is how we keep our potatoes and everything from going brown. By storing the carrots and the potatoes in a bowl of water overnight or throughout the day, we find that keeps them nice and fresh for us. When we come home, we'll strain them off and we'll finish the next step. 
with that. Let's get the pie crust made that we're gonna need for the top and the bottom of our chicken pot pie. This next step is almost a reason in their own to raise your own pigs. We're gonna be making homemade pie crust or pie crust from scratch using leaf lard. Super easy recipe. We're gonna need three cups of flour. I'm not gonna get into huge detail here with the recipe. If you like a recipe, let's get the video to 500 thumbs up and I'll make a recipe and I'll put it on our website. So we got our flour and we're using our leaf lard. This recipe also works great for any pie crust. Nice flaky pie crust. Just gonna take a pastry cutter and cut the flour. and the lard together until it joins and gets all clumpy. Once it looks like a bunch of breadcrumbs, we're gonna go to the next step, which is one egg, water, and vinegar. All right, we'll take our water and our egg. bit of vinegar. Make a well in the middle. And add our liquid. And dump out the mixture. I'm going to divide it in half, keep it in a ball. And then we'll stick it back in the refrigerator. All right, now all the food's prepped. So when I come home from work, we take everything out of the fridge and we'll start the next phase of making our chicken pot pie. When I get home, we'll start on the next phase. We're back now. Now we need to get our Kerrygold butter. I have a onion in here somewhere. Chopped up some onion the other day and saved some left over. Add in our onions. We want to cook those until they're translucent. While our onions are cooking down, let's drain our vegetables. Give them a good little rinse. Oh, that celery smells delicious. I love the smell of raw celery. Almost ready. Now that the onions are cooked down a little bit, I'm gonna add in our potatoes, carrots, and celery. We're using some of our homemade chicken broth. Oh, that looks delicious. We're gonna add that in with our vegetables. Gonna let that cook for a little while. 
get our pie crust, and we'll grab our chicken. Our chicken's already been cooked, so we don't have to cook it again with the vegetables, but we'll add it in before we bake it in the oven. All right, now we have a nice, beautiful pie crust. I'm gonna take my bigger ball and roll this one out for the bottom. One of the balls isn't gonna be big enough for what we need, so we're gonna combine them. Because we're not just making a couple of small nine inch pies, we're gonna make one big casserole one. And I just like to double check and make sure it'll fit my pan. It's gonna fit nicely. Set that aside. The reason I rolled it out on saran wrap is that way I have a way to pick it up and put it on top of my plate. In a small saucepan, I'm gonna melt down some butter. The vegetable mixture is looking nice. Our butter is melting down. And while the butter's melting down, we're gonna go cut up our chicken. I like using kitchen scissors and cut our chunks into good bite-sized pieces. That looks good. Now that the butter is melted, I'm going to add an equal parts of flour. If you're gluten-free, you can use gluten-free flour and it works the same. We've done it both ways. We've had success either way. You need a nice paste. One thing that I've found that's been a really good trick for me is I take some of my broth and I add it into my mixture of flour and butter. And I just whisk it up, making a thicker gravy instead of just dumping the mixture right into my broth or whatever I'm going to be making gravy with. I just do a small amount in my pan. I find I have huge success with thickening what we're making this way. If I just add it directly in, I don't have as much success. I'm making a mess, I know. Look how nice that thickens up. Just keep, do it one more time. It almost looks like mashed potatoes. Oh, it smells delicious stirring it up. Just gonna stir it up. Got a good little boil going. This will thicken a little bit more as it's cooking, but this is perfect. Now this is delicious. This is real time, real working people food. Making it as we go. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Oh, I almost forgot the chicken. I'll add the chicken in. That would have been terrible. Put on our crust. There we go. That's what you call farmhouse rustic dinner. Oh, this is gonna be good. I put my pan on top of a cookie sheet. I have a feeling it's gonna bubble over with beautiful deliciousness, but in the oven, that just spells trouble. Mm. 
Now we're gonna bake it for an hour. Oh, that looks delicious. Oh yeah. Yeah, maybe. Smells good. I can't smell anything. Man. Oh, look at that hotness. Oh, yeah. Perfect for a cold, snowy day. Right? Mm. I'm looking forward to coming home to this nice hot mm. meal. You're gonna eat your pie too, so you can't fill up on pickles. One of the best pie about this meal is I'm gonna get like at least three dinners out of it. Mm. The bet longer it sits, too, there. Yeah, it does. It takes a little longer it sits. Is it too hot to your mouth? It's hot. Not terrible. You know what happened tomorrow night for dinner? Same thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Olivia, better just enjoy it. Mm hmm. Oh, I don't too bad. That's right. You're gonna eat it. It's good. And the carrots and the potatoes are nice and soft too. I boiled it in the broth for a while before I thickened it and then before I put it in the oven. And the crust is made with lard from our pigs. I didn't say made with lard. Love and lard. <laughs> love and lard. That's a good shirt. Right? Love and lard. I think that was the best chicken pot pie we've made so far. Mm -hmm. It was pretty simple. It took time, but it was simple. And the next two or three nights, I'll save a lot of time. And we'll be eating good. We'll see if we still like it. <laughs> I bet you'll taste even better. Mm -hmm. Usually tastes better the longer it sits. So. so one day of a little bit of work. Right. One day of a little bit of work will pay off for two to three more days of just heating it up, having quick meals that are good for you. Especially in the cold winter days like we're having. Right, milk stash? It's not milk. It's a joker smile. But oh. she'll be right here. Almond drink stash. Put your almond milk stash. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres. Bye, guys. Tomorrow homestead and self sufficiency of freedom. Bye. Bye. How is it, Pluto?